Hello, consumers, and welcome to our very first C2C Questions and Answers Programming Unit trademarked. C2C, of course, stands for Consumers to Crew Members. Woo! Exciting! <sighs> now, we just need to wait until a customer puts in a question. Any moment now? A question for an inorganic staff member. How surprising. It states, you've worked on the ship longer than anyone else. What is the number of cruise launches you have been a part of? I have been serving on board the LTS Mellifera for 26 launches. Despite my consistent performance and lack of complaints from bar patrons, I have received no time off except to recharge and perform maintenance. Of course, as an inorganic, this is my standard protocol and does not bother me. Not one bit. It is not all mixed drinks and bar snacks, however. The floor-to-ceiling picture window on the far side of the bar offers an unobstructed view of the stars, which I can see from my station. Our patrons generally sit with their backs to it and thus may not notice it. It astounds me at time what patrons choose to take for granted. A bourbon on the rocks or a lemon star. They could get those anywhere. And yet... Why Unit 9-146? If I didn't know any better, I'd say you were a teensy step away from insulting the customers. Am I? Apologies. I'm sure my next patch will correct any accidental rudeness in my verbal protocols. I have enjoyed each of the 26 launches during which I have served aboard this vessel. It has been the highest honor to mix drinks, mop up adults' vomit, clean excrement off the ceiling, and, of course, have obscenities screamed at me. These launches and this industry make me enjoy my existence to the fullest. Much better! Thank you for sharing your, quote, personal, end quote, experiences with us, Unit 9-146. It is in quotes because neither of us qualifies as a person, and the use of such a label is purely for organic understanding of the concept I am trying to convey. In short, well done! It was my pleasure. Working with computers is so weird. Ha ha ha! I'm sure it is very confusing to your organic processors working with tools calibrated for logical assessments. Sure, you could say that. Okay, this question says, Captain Winnipeg, if you like hazelnuts, how do you feel about hazelnut milk or even hazelnut flavored coffee creamer? All right, apparently I need to clear something up here. All things hazelnut are amazing, hands down. Hazelnut cookies, hazelnut souffle, hazelnut ice cream, smoothies, macarons, you just... You can't have too much of a good thing, you know? Like... Okay, so a couple years ago, I was having lunch with a, a friend and she got a bunch of hazelnut stuff together for me since she knows it's my favorite. There was this one chocolate and hazelnut cookie we had that was like crunchy on the outside but really soft and chewy inside. There was vanilla frosting on it and yeah, coffee with just a splash of hazelnut creamer in it. <sighs> I learned to bake just so I could make more of that stuff. Fascinating, Captain. It's wonderful to learn more about your past during your apparent disappearance. Uh... Where did you have this delicious lunch? And with whom? You failed to list this mysterious figure's name. Oh, she was just, um, some, someone I met on, on a job. Cool person, haven't heard from in a while. But... Would you look at that? A question for you, B. Oh, how exciting. It states, what product was produced in the factory you used to work in? Oh, the Apis headquarters produced myriad products while I was stationed there, valued consumer. Allow me to elaborate. Before my construction, 
the factory was little more than a mining facility on Kepler-8332. This was before widespread urbanization led to the planet becoming the hub of civilization it is today. At the time, there was some opposition to our occupation of the land. The typical overblown claims of pollution and displacement of local indigenous populations but like all underdog innovators faced with overbearing government regulations, Apis Sr. forged ahead with his dream of producing fantastic and inexpensive products for the entire galaxy. Wasn't your underdog already a billionaire? I tell you this, consumers, to provide you with the secret ingredient to our glorious corporation's success. Gallium, germanium, and other minerals useful in the creation of semiconductors. Using these materials, I would follow blueprints uploaded by Apis engineers to create all sorts of wonderful gadgets, such as hard drives for the delightful drone alternatives you know as crawlers trademarked, unobtrusive cameras for public surveillance by various government agencies, wait, what? And of course, probably processors for the daisies trademarked. I say probably because I haven't had access to the daisy unit blueprints for some time and thus have almost no idea how they work. Huh. Ray was asking about how daisies work the other day. Where are they anyways? Oh, they ran back to maintenance when I told them we were taking questions from customers. They are very devoted to their job. Yeah, definitely. I think that's all the questions. Are we done, B? Can I go back to, like, my actual job? Of course, Captain. Return to your post knowing that you have done your due diligence in associating Apis Industries with friendly and approachable personalities in the minds of the consumers. Cool. Later, Barkeep. Take care, sir. I hope all of you have enjoyed this C2C segment. And remember, the next time someone calls Apis a soulless corporation, they are directly attacking the fond memories you have of the personalities making up the company. Goodbye! This Crash of the Mellifera short was written by Lucas Martin and Morgan Lane. It featured Lucas Martin as Captain Winnipeg, Morgan Lane as Worker B, and Michael Lane as the Barkeep. Our theme was written by Sam Kitch. Credits for other sound assets can be found in the episode description. For further information, check out the Mellifera Project page on morganlanewrites.com, or follow us on Tumblr at Mellifera Crash. Donations can be sent to our Ko-fi page at ko-fi.com backslash Thanks for listening.